Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering Java. Here we're going to learn about the difference between public and private uh, keywords with regard to variables and methods. And so we've actually seen a lot of these things already in a lot of our code. In fact, since day one, we've seen the keyword public pop out. Uh, we haven't seen private too much, but you'll see that public and private here in just a minute are basically tied together and are related to one another. Uh, so we want to just discover those and talk about them a little bit now. The bottom line, I'll tell you what it is, which is what you might typically see in a book, and then I'll do a couple of quick examples in this code here to show it to you. What I have here is a copy and paste of the class aircraft. It's got our constructor in it. It's got a couple of methods. All right, and then I've also got the instantiation, which we're creating our object, we're using our constructor for the Cessna object and the Piper object, and we're printing something out to the screen. So this should seem very familiar to you. We've used it in the previous couple of examples. First, I'm going to tell you what public is and private is, and you'll probably scratch your head and not quite understand it, but once I show you, it'll be very clear. When you have a class definition like this, right, then all of the things inside of the class, for instance, the variables, um, the method, so this method down here, this method down here, they can have a keyword in the front of it that could be either specified to be public or private. Now here, we don't have either one of those specified, and so when nothing is specified, Java uses the default, which is public. So you've actually been using public variables and public methods this whole time, but it's just I haven't told you yet. So if you don't specify anything, Java is going to assume that the word public is right in front of all of these things. So like, for instance, this one, uh, like here, you know, the methods would have a public out in front and so on. Now, public means when you have public in front, it's able to be accessed by uh, methods and code inside of your class and methods and code uh, in other classes and other places in your program. So this variable, for instance, passengers, this is a member variable that's part of the aircraft class, right? So when we want to assign a value to passengers, um, the way we were doing it up here, for instance, is we were <coughs> doing something like this. Now we've already created the object and for the Cessna object, we've put four people in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's say um, uh, Cessna 172.passengers. Let's say we're gonna change that to six or let's, let's make it 10, like that, right? So everything disappears. So you could say system.out.println, something like this. And then you could say Cessna revised passengers. And you could put a plus and you could go Cessna 172.passengers like that. So all we're doing here is we've created the Cessna object. We've put a value of four into its member variable called passengers. That's done with the constructor. And then we print some junk out and then we come over here and we say, all right, we're going to put a new value into the passengers variable for the Cessna object. And we're going to set that equal to 10 and we're going to print that out. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see the Cessna revised passengers is 10. Now, prior to this point, the constructor had set it equal to four. The reason that the code up here in the main method is able to modify this variable here is because this variable is public. All right. So whether or not I have the public keyword there really doesn't matter too much because Java is going to assume that it's public uh, unless it's otherwise specified. So I can hit save here and run it again and everything's going to work the same. Now let me show you what happens when you do the opposite of public. When you have a private variable, which is a member variable in a class, then that means the variable is only able to be accessed by code and methods inside of the class or that are part of the class. It shouldn't be able to be accessed by code that's outside of that class. So this statement here, this one here, is trying to access this variable, which is part of the, the member variable here. And this code that sets this guy is up here in the main method. So if I set this to private, it should not work. So I hit private, and when I do that, um, I hit save, and I notice that there's a red underline here. Immediately, Java realizes the field aircraft.passengers is not visible. If I try to run it, it says errors exist. So it's not going to work. So that's that's basically the difference. I mean, I'll show you a couple more quick examples of, of how it works here in a second. But the bottom line is all of these variables can be declared public or private. The default value is public, or I can explicitly put the, the word public there. Um, and basically, when you do that, when you say public, 
uh, when you do a public variable like cruise speed right now is public, even though it doesn't say so right there, that means that any of the methods in here, for instance, um, uh, let's look at fuel burn rate. This is a public variable. Fuel burn rate is currently accessed by this method down here. That's perfectly fine. But I could also come up here in the main method and I could assign a new burn rate um, to that uh, to that variable because it's public. So it's able to be accessed by members of the class, code in the class, and also code any other classes in the program. Notice that my main method is in the, the class called Lesson 13. That's the name of my program. So this code up here resides in a totally different place. And for public variables, that's perfectly fine. I can access them freely. But as soon as I put private on there, then it locks it down. So the only way I can access this variable is through methods and code that are inside of the class. So this no longer works. And you might ask yourself, why would you want to make something private? Well, I mean, we've done a lot of examples up to this point where you didn't have to do that. So the short answer is you don't have to do it all the time, but it does make sense in certain situations. For instance, you know, I'm, I'm doing this aircraft database and, you know, it's great that I can access the passengers and, and, and if I take this off, for instance, and change the number of passengers in a Cessna. But that's also kind of dangerous because, you know, you got to realize this is a very simple example. I'm explicitly setting everything here. But in a real program with thousands of lines of code, you might have a, a calculation or a, another method that's setting variables in other parts of your program. And you might not want it to access this unless you're explicitly accessing it through a method down here that's inside of the class. For instance, you might want to only set the passengers um, if uh, if if your the passenger count is between you know one and and ten. Because let's say your database is never going to have any airplanes in it that can ever hold any passengers greater than ten. So right now, the way it's set up right now is I can put a uh, value of eighteen here, right? So it's going to work. It's going to put a value of 18 into my Cessna, but I know that they don't even manufacture a Cessna that can do that. What if I have a typo that's like, what if I accidentally put 189? Do you think they make a, a, a small Cessna aircraft that can carry 189 people? No, no, they don't. See, there's no error checking on this. There's no um, making sure that the value in there that's being assigned to it is really the right value. So you could put some error checking up here in the main method, but that gets cumbersome. So the way that you would typically see this is you would, let's say that, let, let's say we want to be able to alter the passenger count. We don't want to do it, um, you know, up here in the main method in this way. Then we could just create a quick method here. We could say void set passengers. This is a, a, a method that we're going to use to set the number of passengers on, on the aircraft, right? And we could say integer um, P for passengers. All right, let's do that. And then we'll open the bracket and we'll set this guy here. I tell you what, for clarity, we'll just do it like this. We'll we'll pass a value p down, which will be just an integer we're going to use to set the passenger count. And then we can basically say, notice our member variable is just called passengers. That's the integer for that airplane. So I can say passenger is equal to p, right? But let's say I only want to do this if, um, let's say if p is greater than or equal to zero. So let's do it like this. If P is greater than or equal to zero and P is less than or equal to 10. So let's say that there's no way that any air, any Cessna or any aircraft in my database is going to be set up uh, with passengers that have that are less than zero, obviously, and greater than 10. And we see that passenger is red here, so we'll put an S because the variable is actually called passengers. So what I'm basically trying to do is I'm saying, look, if we want to lock this down so that only a methods inside of the class can set the passenger count, okay? Then I could create a method called set passengers, and it will take an argument which will be a number, and then it's going to do an error check. It's going to say if the passenger is greater than or equal to zero. Um, actually, it doesn't even make sense for an aircraft to have zero passengers. So let's say it's greater than zero and the passenger count is less than or equal to 10. That means the aircraft can hold between one and 10 people. If that's true, then set the passenger, uh, the passenger's variable equal to whatever I'm passing to it. Else, I can do system.out.println error setting passengers. Okay? 
So what I can do then here is now that this method is created to set the passengers, then I can take this guy and set it private. Now, when I set it private, this variable can only be accessed or, or really interfaced with at all through code and methods that are a part of the class aircraft, okay? So if I go up here, I see right away that I'm no longer able to set the passenger count from up here in the code in the main method. It's just not going to work, right? And notice also the print statement no longer works, all right? So that's not going to work either. So what I can do then is I can say... I can create this guy here and I can just print it out here system dot out dot print ln and I can say revised passenger count and then I can say passenger passengers like that okay so I have a method if I want to set the aircraft passengers to a certain number. It's going to check to make sure that it's in the right range. Then it'll set the member variable. Then it'll print out the new passenger count on the screen. And if it fails this test, then it's going to say you have an error. So what that does is it basically forces any time that I want to alter that variable to go through an error check. So none of these things work anymore. So I'm going to take them out. And then I'm going to do something like Cessna 172.set passengers. All right, set passengers, so it should pop up here. Let's do it like this, dot. Let's go down and just make sure that it's in there. Set passengers is a new method that's listed there. We'll double click on it. It's asking, what is the passenger count? Let's put a five in there, just to put something in there. And then let's go ahead and hit the semicolon. Now notice that there's no red lines here because what's happening is I'm changing that variable that's inside of that class through a method that's inside of the class. So let me go ahead and run this guy. It'll say revised passenger count is five. If I want to change the passenger count to seven, then I can save and hit run revised passenger count is seven. So the point is, is that all of these variables by default are public. And that means they can be accessed by data and by code inside of the class and also by code outside of the class. But in memory, many cases, you want to lock down at least some of your member variables into private uh, variables, which means that they can only be accessed by methods that are inside of the class. You can't access them anywhere else. So it creates a, some overhead. I mean, you might have to create some methods to access those variables and such. Usually you're doing that when you have very important parameters of your class that you just need to make sure are locked down and you only have one way to interface with them. Because basically now look at what we've been able to do. We set up a method. The only way that you can access this variable passengers to set it, to read it or anything else is to go through a method that we've defined here. And that forces that anytime something tries to change that number it goes through an error check and if we actually try to set it equal to for instance 15 and do something like this then it says error setting passengers so putting things private and having a very compartmentalized way of accessing your variables is really a way to lock down your code in Java when it's really important that you don't have um, the variable accessed all over the place in different methods and classes. So your specific instance, your specific example of when you might need to use it is going to vary, but the thing that you need to, to understand that I'm really trying to get across is that all of these things have a public um, a public uh, uh, cast to it right now, even if you don't see it, which means you can alter, change, or interface, for instance, this variable with any of the code inside the class, also any of the code in the main method or any other classes, but if you take it away and you put private in its place, then that means that this cruise speed variable can no longer be accessed outside the class. It has to go through methods or code that are inside of the class. It's one of those things that's hard to get your brain wrapped around until you see an example. And I'm hoping that this example can, can lock it down for you. Um, now, you'll ask yourself, when do I need to use private? When do I need to use public? My advice to you is don't mess with private variables until you have a need to. Whenever you get into that particular application or that particular project where you really feel like this needs to be locked down and unaccessible to anything else, you'll have enough experience to know to do that at that point. Otherwise, for now, I su suggest to you just to leave everything public until you really have a need to, to go private, keep everything locked down like this. So make sure you understand this. Watch it a couple times if needed, a couple times if needed. Then follow me on to the next lesson where we will discuss the static keyword, which is another 
another guy that we have learned about and seen before, but never really understood uh, up until this point. 